We are starting an eight-week session on needlepoint techniques. Let's get started. You will learn all the proper techniques for getting started on any needlepoint canvas. This course covers topics from threading a needle, anchoring your thread, and learning a couple of stitches for needlepoint. So what is needlepoint? What is embroidery? Needlepoint refers to closely stitched embroidery worked on canvas, whereas embroidery is the method of decorating fabric or other materials using a needle and thread. If you see this picture below, it shows a little pillow that, that says sisters. That would be embroidery. We're taking some fabric, other fabric, putting it on top of another piece of fabric, and we are then doing some needlepoint work on this pillow. On the circular hoop, you'll see a rainbow. That would be a needlepoint. I wanna talk about scissors first. There are craft scissors or embroidery scissors. We have big scissors and we have small scissors. Big scissors are to cut the fabric when you have fabric. And the little ones are to cut the thread. We're gonna have a lot of thread cutting. You're gonna use mostly the little scissors. You're not going to use these big scissors. They're only going to be really briefly and they're kind of hard to work with. Here are some of the materials in your canvas bag. You will get a seven inch hoop, one swatch with three buttons, four bundles of fabric and felt, a package of paper, one little sweet treat, and a Ziploc bag. We're going to take a look closer at the Ziploc bag. In the Ziploc bag, that's what we're gonna be working with today. You have some felt, Felt is a type of fabric. It's like more like a craft. You have some needles that we're gonna work with. You have some clothespins, you know clothespins. So they're bobbin holders and I put it on a ring so we can stay organized. A ring, a pencil, embroidery floss, and some band-aids. Can anybody tell me why you have band-aids in a needlepoint craft? Um, Because you could get hurt. Why what? What could possibly hurt you in this class? What could possibly? Yeah. Yes. So don't be afraid, even when I was getting ready for this class just a few minutes ago, I was practicing something and I poked my finger. It's all right, the pain goes away really fast. But some of you might get hurt and I know Band-Aids always make kids feel better. So I put some Band-Aids in there in case you get poked with the needle. And don't worry, it happens. Um, put your Band-Aid on and you keep on going, right? Because we wanna have fun. I got my little Pez thing together. So let's begin is one clothespin, one skein, it's called a skein, and you need your bobbin holders and your scissors. Those four things, you need your pencil to. Put everything else back in your bag. If you can work on a table, I don't know where you're working right now, but you can't do this work on your lap. So if you need to, carry your computer or something. You need a table to work on for this. If I'm going too fast, you gotta slow me down and say, slow down, you're going too fast. Two ways that people work with, I'm gonna move this to the side, this skein, it's called a skein, this string. What happens when you're doing needlepoint, it gets really tangled and then you're almost like to yourself, you're saying, I can't do this anymore, it's so tangled. So I want to make sure you're not frustrated. One way to unravel this, if you look at the ends, one has like a long piece. Can you find that? On the other end, you could barely find it. So on this end, if you hold the skein in your hand and you slowly, like a snail, pull, pull, see if you can pull it out just a little bit without getting tangled. Do you feel it? Okay, so you can put that down and you got some thread out. So some people like to just use the skein and just use it like that. Pull a little bit at a time, do their work, pull a little bit of their time. However, I don't do very well with that. I love to put them on clothespins and I like to put them in a jar so I never have tangled. So we're going to now wind it up on the clothespin. So you need your clothespin. Before you wrap up, you need your pencil because 
say you're working on this and you love this color and you throw these little papers away, you're going to say, what color did I get? So see if you can find a number on it. Do you see a number? Like mine says 224. Can you find the number on yours? You need to go and write that on the tip of your clothespin. You see where you, you open? You want to write that with your pencil and write the number on it. It really is going to help you because if you ever want this color again, you're going to say, oh, I know the number. So I'm going to write my number. So mine is 224. 224. Two, so that's all I do, just writing it down. Once you wrote it down, you're going to do, I don't know, maybe four pulls on it. Go ahead and pull it four times. So go one, then let go. Two, go slow though, because you don't want to get it all tangled. Three, once you get like this pile over here, find the beginning. Once you get the beginning, you need to pick up your clothespin. You're going to put your floss where the number is right there. Does everybody have that so far? Remember, if I'm going too fast, you gotta slow me down. But I don't wanna go too slow, I don't wanna be a turtle. You're going to then turn it a little bit and hold it right like in the middle of it. You see where my hand is in the middle? And now you're going to wind. You're going to go around it, start by your thumb, keep on going around and you're gonna work up, not to the number, you're gonna stop before you hit the number. And you're going to keep on going and winding, winding. And when you get to the number, does anybody know what we should do once we get to the number? Do I just stop? What should I do? I have to do something. And then I need to go back down to my thumb. Back down. So you're going to go up, down, up, down. Now I got to the end of my floss. So now I need to do four more pulls slowly because you don't want to tangle it. So I'm going to do my four pulls. I got to the end. So you're going to remember go slow because if you get all tangled you're going to get frustrated we want to have happy times doing this so i took a little bit out i'm going to hold my clothespin and again i'm going to keep on rolling it rolling going from my thumb up to the number once i get to the number i'm going to go up to my thumb and back down so you're going to continue doing that until you get all your floss on this clothespin. We're only gonna do one today and your homework is going to be to do the other two, but we don't wanna sit here and just wind thread. That would be a boring class. All right, good. So you just keep on doing that. And we're going to make sure we have one of the clothespins done today. And like I said, for homework for next week, you should do the other two and put them on clothespins so you'll be ready for the class and you won't get all tangled up. Because this floss has six little strings in it. We're going to look at it later. We're gonna look really closely at the strings. Once we finish rolling this and putting it on our clothespin, we're going to then split it. And the reason why we split this is because it's six strings in it and it's really hard to work six strings. So we're gonna make three and three. So I am at the end. When you get towards the end, you're going to pinch your clothespin as much as you can. I don't know if it's too tight. And you want to have this hold it. That's gonna hold it and that's gonna stay in your back and it won't get tangled. You're gonna be so happy. For those that are done, what you're going to need is to get your needles because we're going to thread. Um, you need your bobbins, needles, bobbin, and your pair of scissors. And we're gonna go to the next step. You guys are working well. We're halfway there. We're gonna get you onto the first stitch. Hold your clothespin, and you're going to take about, you're gonna unclip it, about the size from your finger to your elbow. It's probably about, I don't know, 12 to 18 inches. A little bit more is all right. You're going to cut that piece off because that's how we're gonna start. You're going to cut it. 
Instead of going straight, go sideways. That makes it like a pointy cut. So cut. Again, we're gonna stay nice and neat. You need to take your floss on your clothespin, clip it, and put it to the side. We're gonna go into work like that all the time. Put that to the side, you don't need that anymore. We're done with that. You have that long piece of thread, and there are six little strings in there. I want us to look at that right now. Just kind of like use your thumb and kind of pull it across. Does everybody see that? You want to put three on one side and three on another. The trick with this is you've got to kind of hold it up and go slow and you're going to see it start turning. Slow, go, and ta-da! It's split. Did everybody get that? Okay. Again, I like to work nice and neat. You need to take one of them and you're going to put it on your bobbin because guess what happens? If you don't put it away, it falls on the floor, it gets stuck on your clothes. So how you wrap it on the bobbin is you hold, you're going to take the tail, hold it with your thumb, notch it, and you're going to turn it around like we did on the clothes pins. Do you see what I'm doing? You go to the top and then you go down to your thumb. When you get to your thumb, you're going to go back up and until you get towards the end and you're gonna re-notch it. Now you need to put that to the side. You don't need that right now. Who can tell me what you notice about the two needles? They're different. Let's talk about that and then we're going to be ready to get our hoop ready. Um, there's different sides. Yes, the bigger one is because we're learning how to thread a needle and threading a needle is really hard to get it into that little eye. And the little one is gonna be when we become a little bit better at it. So today, take out the big one. We're gonna be working with the big one today and put your other swatch away. You have to hold the needle. I'm holding it in my left hand because I'm a, uh, a righty. I uh, write with my right hand. Um, and I hold the thread. Don't hold the string too far away because what happens is, look what happens to the thread. It gets like, it's not so good. The trick to doing it is you have to slide it where you almost, can everybody see it? You almost are like pinching it. That's the way to thread your needle. So take your needle, go ahead. This should be easy because I got you the biggest eye I could find and see if you can put that string in and then grab the string and pull. Now, if you can't do it, go ask somebody to help because that's the hardest part of needle points is to get that threaded. Now that you threaded your needle, it's important that the two ends line up. Do you see how my, my, the both ends are lined up and we're going to make a knot in it. So put them together. Well, it's gonna be in my left hand, but the tail is gonna be sticking out. Let's see if you can see that, you see how I'm holding it. And then, does everybody know how to make a knot or no? Now, okay, perfect. All right, that's fine. So you're gonna hold it, twist. I'm going slow, slow motion, and I'm going to make a loop. Do you see that loop, what I just did? I'm holding the loop. I'll do it again. You're going to hold it. You're going to go up, turn, turn, turn. There's a loop and you're going to hold it in your hand. Did everybody get that part so far? Once you have that part, this little tail thing, you have to go and fold it and put it into that hoop. Let me get my end here. There's like six strands now. Fold it and put it in. And you're going to go to the other side and pull that, pull that little ends and kind of looks like a pretzel now. You're gonna slowly pull it, not too tight, not too loose, just a little bit so you can make a knot. 
Does everybody have their knot? You should be very proud if you do. That was really hard. That's why it takes 40 minutes just to thread the needle. Did everybody get that part? You need to take your swatch and you need to put this in the swatch until we get ready to use it. We're not ready right now. So how you put this in is you hold it in your hand. You're going to poke in the top. Look, it's on the other side. You're not gonna pull it through. You're going to then just poke it back again and that's just gonna be your holder. If you have a pin cushion, I have like tons of pin cushions. You can use a pin cushion. I like pin cushions. So put that to the side. And now let's get ready to do our first stitch. You need to go in your canvas bag and you need to find the hoop. This roll, it's white. So you have your hoop and you have that little roll. It's like a little package and it says 100% cotton. Some of you might have one that also says felt on the bottom or something else. We're not gonna use that right now. Undo the bow slowly and you're going to have extra floss. I gave you a little extra floss, different color. So go ahead and slowly undo that. And what do you think I'm gonna tell you where to put this floss? Can anybody guess what I'm gonna tell you? Do you just throw it on the table? Do you throw it on the, on your bobbin? Yes, go grab your bobbin. Cause you know, I like to work nice and neat and you need to put that on your bobbin. We're staying nice and neat now because when you need that, you're going to have it. Find an empty bobbin. You're going to put it on the notch. Go and wrap it around. Just keep on wrapping. And then you're going to put it back on the other notch and put that away. You only need to take out 100% cotton. You need the 100% cotton one. And we're gonna get ready to do our first stitch. And the other one, what do you think I'm gonna tell you to do with the other one? The second one, we don't need two. We only need one, the 100% cotton one. What do you think I'm going to tell you to put the other one? You had two, right? Yeah, put it back in your bag. So now your hoop, it has two rings. Take them apart. You're going to take the one ring that has no metal piece on it and you're going to slide it underneath the fabric. And you're going to take the one that has a metal piece and you're going to put it on top of it. So it's kind of like squashing the fabric on it. You need to take your fabric and pull it a little bit to make this like a drum. You want this like a drum. You need to pull and tighten. Pull a little bit and tighten. It's gotta be a little snug. You're trying to get it like a drum. You keep on pulling, holding it in your hand, go around and make it nice and tight, kind of tight over there. Once you have it tight, I wanna get your stitch in. You need your pencil and you're going to put a dot about, I don't know, about an inch from the top. About an inch from the top. You see where my dot is? It's about an inch to the corner near the hoop, about an inch away, and there's a little pencil dot. Go ahead and do another dot on the other side. It's gonna go across your hoop. You should have two dots. And the first stitch I'm gonna teach you is called a running stitch. Then you're gonna make little dashes. It's the size of your like pinky, a centimeter. And you're going to do, you're gonna do one little dash and it's going to be a centimeter. Then you're gonna leave an empty space, another centimeter empty space. So go ahead and make little dashes. We're doing a running stick. So you're gonna make a little dash, leave it blank. A little dash, leave it blank. Dash, leave it blank. Pick up your needle in your hand. I'm a righty and I'm going to hold it as if I have my palm up and you're gonna put your thumb on it. You're gonna hold it like that to go in. Then you're gonna pick up your hoop with your left hand. You have your needle in your right hand. You're going to, you can't look on the other side because it is, there's no lines there. You didn't make any lines over there. 
you're going to, with your needle, kind of drag it back and forth until you find where you need to go. You can't see. I'm just dragging my needle, and then when I feel like I got it, I'm going to poke it through. You poke it halfway, and then you're going to take your hand from underneath. You're going to lift it to grab the needle. You're going to pull the needle, not too tight, not too loose, just until it stops. If you go too tight, your knot is going to go flying right through the fabric. Did everybody get to that part where they got their needle out? Then you're going to take your needle in your hand and you're going to poke it at the end of that dash, halfway, only halfway. And you're going to take your hand and go underneath your hoop. You can turn your hoop around to look for it because then you probably won't get poked, but get in the habit of just working with the hoop facing you. Pull the needle. Again, you don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. You want a stitch that is looking like this. Then you're going to work from underneath. So you're going to go from the bottom, then from the top, bottom to the top. I'm dragging my needle on the fabric, looking for the beginning of the stitch, pulling it through halfway. Take my hand, pull it through. Again, not too tight, not too loose. Can everybody see my picture that I'm doing there? You're going to work like that until you get to the end. And then I want you to just keep your needle stuck on your hoop if you want to wait for the next class. But just use your hoop now just to practice the one line running stitch. And next week, we'll be ready to do more stitches. Finish the one line. Uh, once you get to the end, you're going to poke it through the top. You're going to flip your canvas. And then you have to make a knot on the back side. And that's it. You're done. Remember to always put your needles away. Don't leave them anywhere on the table, on the chairs. You don't want to get poked or you don't want anybody else to get hurt. So continue like that until you get to the end. And then we are done. We learned how to do a running stitch. When you're done, make sure all this stuff you clean up after yourself. Nobody should be cleaning up but you. Put everything in your canvas bag. You put your needle back on your swatch and leave them in your canvas bag for next week. 